I wanted to start this particular show with a discussion of manners. And it occurs to me that I usually address you and all audiences as a mass, as a group. You never really become individuals to me. And so I was thinking, maybe this week it would be nice and polite if I said a quick hello to just uh, at least one of you. Uh, I'll come down here and just say a quick hello to you. So what's your name there, fella? Uh, Jason. Jason, nice to meet you, Jason. And are you a local man, Jason? Uh, Kent. From Kent, OK, yeah, so you've travelled a little bit. What, what do you do for yourself in, in Kent? What do you? IT. You're in IT. OK, everyone is these days, aren't they, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> Bit of a busman's holiday in some ways, isn't it? This coming out to an IT thing. Yeah, no, it's just it's just a nice, it's just a little chat. That's all it is. Nothing, nothing untowards. <laughs> nothing untowards. Uh, but I'm just saying, I, I did that for a reason. Like, I did that for a reason. Obviously, Jason, he's a very well brought up man. He's very polite. When I offered my hand there, he was straight there, wasn't he? Shaking it. Because he knows that is how polite people behave in modern society. I like that in you, Jason. Well done, you. Not everyone is so well disposed, are they? I have met a man who did not know how to shake hands. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the man I am talking about. <laughs> if you don't know him, his name is Alex Reed. He is best known, I think, for having once been married to Jordan, uh, but I believe he plies his trade as a cage fighter. Uh, incidentally, that screen is there for information purposes. Uh, it's not a scaled up version of his business card. Um, <laughs> although it would be magnificent if it were. <laughs> Now, if I'm going to tell you that I met Alex Reed, my ego insists that I make it very clear I was not working with Alex Reed. I was working in the same building as Alex Reed. I was in the makeup chair having my brow tended to by a young lady in Wart Alex. I did what polite people do. I am polite. I'm also a very good liar. I said, I said, it's nice to meet you, didn't I? Yeah. I offered him my hand. He stared at that hand like it was some kind of foreign alien object he'd never seen the like before, and then he did this. <laughs> Tried to turn my handshake into a bloody fist bump. I don't think that's fair. If he'd started it, if he'd walked in and gone, all right, fella, I'd have been right there with the bump, wouldn't I? Because the person who starts the greeting runs the greeting, don't they? Those are the rules. You join in with whoever starts it. And I started it with a handshake. He is being all alpha male, wasn't he? He's thinking, no, no, I'm in charge here. I'll show him who's top dog. He's trying to force me to turn my handshake into a fist bump. And I'm embarrassed to tell you, but I did. I yielded, ladies and gentlemen. I gave him a fist bump. And I saw him after that. He had a bit of a cocky swagger in him, thinking, yeah, I showed him. He knows who's in charge. Little does he know, ladies and gentlemen, secretly, up here, I was playing stone, scissors, paper. So I win. <laughs> I win. That's the important thing. In fact, I win twice, because when he sat down in the makeup chair, he proceeded to explain exactly how many cold sores he had, and I was left feeling quite pleased that we hadn't pressed any more flesh than was strictly speaking necessary. <laughs> While most people share a view of what constitutes good manners in person, I think things change a little when we go online. Many of us become a little less gracious. Something happens to us. We become disinhibited in some way. I noticed it very much after I got married. Here I am, ladies and gentlemen, on my wedding day, and you might think that that was not an appropriate outfit for that wedding, but let me tell you, we are made for each other. We really are. <laughs> anyway, after I got married, a couple of things happened. One of the things was that people saw pictures of me and my new bride, and I found complete strangers started contacting me via Twitter or email or Facebook, and they would say, you're punching above your weight, eh? Hey, 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 never met you before, have I? Calling you ugly. I don't think that's a very nice thing to say to a stranger. Now, another thing that happened after I got married is I put on some weight. In the first three months of being married, I put on two stones in weight. I swelled up to 14 and a half stone. Now, there is a reason for that. The reason is Mrs Gorman's hobby is baking cakes. But Mrs Gorman doesn't eat cakes. She is allergic to wheat. <laughs> Bobby is baking things that she can't eat. A fresh cake would arrive on the kitchen counter every other day, and I'm the only other sod who lives there, aren't I? And I would eat the cakes because I am polite. And I like cakes. <laughs> Not a lot, but I like them. And people, complete strangers, would see me at my top weight of 14 and a half stones, and they would, without any compunction, the same people would get in touch by email or by Twitter, saying, oh, you're carrying a bit of timber, yeah? Hey, hey, never met you before, calling you porky. 
I made one TV show at my 14 and a half stone top weight. It was on the air for one hour. During that hour, 184 separate individuals got in touch to tell me I was fat. <laughs> More than three a minute for an hour. That wasn't the jolliest hour of my life, thank you very much. Now, in truth, I'll be honest with you, I'm quite thick-skinned about this sort of stuff. In fact, I reckon that extra half stone I'm still carrying is largely thick skin. <laughs> but the thing that winds me up about messages like this is that they're bloody contradictory, aren't they? If this is the timeline here, ladies and gentlemen, and that there is my weight, and that there is where I'm punching, well, surely, as my weight increases, there should be less room left above it for punching, shouldn't there? At some point, I should be in negative equity. I should be punching below my weight, shouldn't I? Except it doesn't really work like that, does it? That's not what they're really talking about. What they're talking about is the attractiveness quotient, aren't they? On the attractiveness quotient graph, there's me there, and there's Mrs Gorman there, who I freely admit is a more visually stimulating individual than I. Now, we got married on the 8th of October 2010. That is the day on which the cakes started arriving. <laughs> That is the day I started piling on the pounds. That is when I started lowering my attractiveness quotient while Mrs Gorman carries on at her usual gorgeous level. What she's doing there, secretly, with her so-called hobby of baking cakes, is she is making herself exponentially more attractive, isn't she? That's what she's up to.